think that uh, uh, it was not correct to ban Donald Trump. I think that was that was a mistake um, because it uh, it alienated a large part of the country and did not ultimately result in Donald Trump not having a voice. I would reverse the perma ban. It's morally wrong and flat out stupid. Flat out stupid. Elon Musk revealing he will reverse the ban on Donald Trump if his deal to Twitter, to buy Twitter, goes through. Biotech entrepreneur Vivek Ramswamy uh, joins us right now. Uh, Vivek, you know, so Elon says, you know, it was morally wrong to keep uh, Trump off. And now Jack Dorsey says, yeah, it was. Uh, Jack Dorsey's still running the show. What's going on? Well, well, look, actually, Jack Dorsey, in, in fairness here, as the founder of the company, I think always had a vision to respect free speech on the platform. He let the managerial class at Twitter catch up with him. Yeah. Now that Elon Musk has actually taken over, Jack Dorsey's also, also starting to voice his views in favor of free speech. But I think this should surprise no one to allow Donald Trump back on Twitter. Because if you have a new owner of Twitter that says they want to operate the company as a free speech platform, table stakes for a free speech platform is allowing elected right. officials, especially major elected officials, to voice their opinions on the platform. So I think this should come as a surprise to no one. It should not be controversial. That's part of Twitter realizing its true mission. Sure. You know, Elon Musk wants to remove uh, politics from social media, from, from free speech. And it's kind of like something you announced yesterday. Uh, Strive Asset yeah. Management launched, launched yesterday with a mission to remove politics from business. And this is your company. That's right. So, so I've been talking about these issues for a couple of years. I decided it was time to actually translate this into action. Because one of the problems in this country, Steve, is that the three largest asset managers in the world, that's BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, these three firms basically control nearly every public company in corporate America in an indirect way. You think of competitors like Exxon and, and Chevron or Disney and Paramount Pictures or even Coke and Pepsi. Turns out the upstream owners of these firms, some of their top shareholders are the same people enforcing this ideology. Many of them were the top shareholders of Twitter before Elon Musk. And what we're doing is representing actually the voices of the actual shareholders, not the institutions who claim to be the shareholders, but their clients, the everyday citizens of this country, firefighters, nurses, doctors, small business owners, who want to deliver a different message as shareholders right. to corporate America's boardrooms, focus on excellent products, not on politics. And so in a certain way, it's kind yeah. of like tying into the Elon Musk point, what Elon Musk is doing to Twitter we want to do that to every major company in corporate America across sectors. Well, you know, so many people, uh, Vivek, have talked about Disney. You know, why did Disney s step into the debate down in Florida? And their stock price, I think, it went down 20 bucks or 20 percent or something like that. So if you're a stockholder, it's like, I, I didn't buy this stock. Uh, to be political. I bought this stock to make money. So what you're going to do with Strive Asset Management is try to make money for your stockholders, your shareholders, and stay out of politics. Exactly, but with a message to companies to put the interests of your customer first. Focus on product excellence for your customer. And the Disney example is perfect, Steve, because they alienated over 60% of their customer base, according to survey data. And if we are a shareholder of Disney, we deliver a different message than Disney's top three shareholders do today. Our message is to Bob Chapek, knock it off, focus on excellent products and services to your customers. Disney's top shareholders as of now, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, do not deliver that message. In many ways, they deliver the opposite message, telling these CEOs to wade into these hot-button political issues. That's the voice that's missing, and I think we need to restore that true diversity of ideas in our American capital yeah. markets if our economy is actually going to function. It, you mentioned capital markets. What you're doing sounds like capitalism. Uh, so you launched yesterday. When's it going to be, be available for the average person? Yeah, so, so what we said in the press release was that in the third quarter of the year is when we expect to launch our first product. But this is going to be a long-run journey of bringing a different voice to capital markets, a different voice to the table. And the, the number one thing we're focused on at every step is that mission of taking the actual shareholders in this country and representing their actual voices mm -hmm. in a way that the big three asset managers aren't doing today. And those big asset managers are located in places like New York. I think Strive's going to be there in Ohio, right? That's right, right here in Columbus, Ohio. That's where I am. If you're going to change the heart of the country and the heart of our economy, you got to start in the heart of the country. And so that's where we are. All right. Uh, great talking to you today, Vivek. 
We'll be watching. Check it out. Strive Thank Asset you. Management. He's also got an upcoming book. It's called Nation of Victims. Thank you, sir. Thank you.